Tech. He asked, how about this, for the pregame talk, he had Dennis Scott, who was a member of the Lethal Weapon 3 team that took Tech to the 1990 Final Four. But today, before this one, it was the governor, Sonny Perdue, of the state of Georgia. And, I, you know, you, you hear that back in Atlanta. Some people might start saying, wait, there's a conspiracy <laughs> theory here. Perdue, a, a Georgia grad, but he talked to Tech before the game. And, uh, well, that'd be the last time at Georgia, man, Roy, because you remember Tech was 12-0 and, and got knocked off Look their at first him. loss of the year, got knocked off by Georgia in a double overtime game. 28 seconds, Bynum's three brings it to eight. Jim, this is why I thought fouling early on would have been a strategy. As long as Jim Calhoun was going to say, hey, we're going to try to play the clock, go ahead and foul and extend the game. Now, I realize it's been a long shot, but that is one way that you can go ahead and get back into a ball game Put a guy like Talik Brown on the line as much as you can, or put Boone on the line, or put Okafor on the line. Garnett, Hewitt a moment ago, two coming for Anderson. Hewitt, his team got it under 10. Would never imagine that at 25. He's building something special there are his parents. And Jim, going back to the fact that anytime Georgia Tech held teams under 70 points, they were 24-0. You can see where the score is right now. Connecticut at 78. Let's see if they can fire a quick three here. And Connecticut never lost a game that they've got 82. Wow. That was down and out for a second to bring it to six. Up ahead to Anderson. Lewis went for the steal. It was a foul, foul at the other end. Foul on the other end, yep. Uh, Anderson wanted that one. He made a nice catch. But you know what's happened here, that Jim Calhoun wanted to go ahead and use clock, and his team really didn't function very well in that, and it brought Georgia Tech back into this ballgame. Okafor to the line. For two. 23 points, 14 rebounds, two blocks. And think what he did in such limited action on Saturday with the foul problems. You know, here's a kid that graduates in three years with honors in you finance would, you, if you, <laughs> and you think of all the things you got to do with your time and time management to be a player of this caliber then you know to graduate in three years you can bet he made the most out of his 22 minutes when it came to time management on saturday against duke you know what else i like jim when he was recruited nobody said oh my goodness connecticut has okafer championship assured he's made himself an outstanding player elders three brings it to seven just time too little 11 seconds and a seven-point march. Oh, hard fall for Bynum, but it's going against Georgia Tech. And you can see what they're doing. Fouling, getting the ball back, shooting threes. They brought uh, what was a very commanding lead back down to something that was workable. As I said, if this was the end of the first half, it would be a real momentum swing, but that's not the case. So let's send Anderson. Back to the line with just under 11 seconds remaining. Anderson, who has put himself squarely in a position next year to be one of the Big East top players. Big time. Yep. Boone, Villanueva. And Jim, what's going to be interesting when you start projecting into new next year, Georgia Tech with basically their team back. Duke with basically their team. Wake Forest with all of their team. North Carolina with all of their team. And Maryland basically with all of theirs. The Atlantic Coast Conference, that was the number one rated conference in the country this year, going to be very, very strong, as will the Big East. Over again, Wild this time into Hultifer to Tillich. And that's going to do it. The game is over. UConn's the national champion for 2004. relaxed here in San Antonio all week, took his team everywhere, didn't hold back, didn't sequester the team out of the downtown area here, had him out on the river walk, took him to the NCAA salute presentation on Thursday, first coach to ever take his team to that event, let him be introduced. Total access, you saw when Greg and our studio guys came on, total access here to his pregame talk.
He's a changed man since his last championship. At age 61, he just a year ago was battling prostate cancer during the middle of the season. He missed 16 days of work after surgery, February 6, 2003. He says, I woke up and realized how lucky I was. I had a great family. I had five grandchildren, a tremendous wife, two healthy sons, and I was doing something I loved. UConn, there was never a doubt tonight. Not the best team on this floor. The mecca of college basketball is in stores, Connecticut. The Huskies take the title. 82-73. We'll hear from them as we continue from San Antonio in a moment.